Hey, 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 how are you doing guys? Welcome to a 25th Computer Networking Tutorial by iFectioner.com. Today, we are going to discuss about virtual private networks, what are VPNs, what is the history of VPN, why did we need VPNs or virtual private networks, how do VPNs operate, what are the different applications of VPNs and what to do and what not to do in case of VPNs. So first we would be discussing about what do we mean by VPN or virtual private networks. So you can think of VPN as a technology which extends your local area network, your private network to remote locations. So let us suppose we have uh, using and it in doing so it uses the internet infrastructure and internet protocols. And it does so in a secure manner. So VPN is a technology which extends your private network to remote locations using public internet and it does so in a secure manner. So how does a virtual private network operates? So we have got uh, a client at location B and we have got a server at location A or we have got our network at location A. Uh, for VPN operations we have to have a VPN server at our location A. So let me write VPN server and at location B we have to have a VPN client installed on our client side. So this client should know the IP address or, or public IP address of our VPN server which is let's suppose 1.2.3.4. This client would have an interface and it would uh, give a uh, login name and password or biometric authentication method to log on to the server. So uh, if the server authenticates that yes it can serve the client then a tunnel is established. So first step is authentication. That is the client has to authenticate itself and the server also authenticates that it can serve the client and then a tunnel is established using a tunneling protocol. So guys we know that there are millions of routers on the internet and the communication uh, is done on the internet through packets. So if a packet has to be sent from point A to point B from server to the client then it would follow some route using different routers. A VPN connection makes this route secure by using the tunneling protocol. A tunneling protocol simply establishes a virtual tunnel along the route that a packet would follow or the set of packets would follow. So it would establish a virtual tunnel between point A and B and the communication in VPN scenario would be turned in the encrypted and encapsulated way. 
The real packets are first encapsulated and encrypted and they are sent from point A to point B. So why do we need packet encapsulation and encryption? We would be discussing it in detail later on. But first we would discuss about VPNs and how did VPN come into existence. For this we would be discussing a little history of internet. So guys, most of us know that internet come into the existing existence using the technologies and services of ARPANET and the MILNET in the United States. The ARPANET was intended for the university communication, the communication between different universities, whereas MILNET was intended for military communication. Back in 1960s, the U.S. Department of Defense and the defense authorities wanted to establish a secure and a reliable communication system. In those days, the communication between two cities was done using the central hubs. So if we would like to send uh, some uh, kind of a data or a telephony call, from point A to point B, then that has to be sent through different hubs that were in between point A and point B. But the problem was that if in case of a war or a natural disaster, point C, point D or point E were destroyed, then the military could not communicate between point A and point B. So they wanted to establish a self-healing network. They wanted to establish such a network that even uh, in case of a war, if point C was destroyed or point D was destroyed, the communication between point A and point B City A and City B was still possible. So the concept of routers come into existence. We have a City A and we have a City B. And in between City A and B, in, in the present scenario, we have got a set of routers. That is, we have got thousands and millions of routers on the internet. So on the internet we know that the communication is turned to different routers. So if A has to send some information to B then it would follow some route and it would be using the different routers. Now in this scenario in case of internet or the milnet even if 90% or 99% or 95% of the routers are destroyed in case of a natural disaster or a war, the communication would still be possible because it would follow a different router and that is why it is called a self-healing communication because that route would take a little longer the communication would take a little longer to communicate but it would still be able to do the communication between point A and B so this case is very good for reliable communication but it is not a secured way of communication because a hacker can hack into a router and he can sniff the packets that are being passed through the router and he can hack the 
secured information about us. And if we would like to make this information secure, then we have to use the VPN technology. Because VPN technology makes the communication on internet between point A and point B secured. And it ex extends basically the internal network using the public internet. And because uh, it is not a real network that has been extended, that is why it is called the virtual private network. So, guys, now let us discuss in detail how does our VPN works in our real life. So, let us suppose uh, that we have our headquarters at point A and we have got a VPN server installed at point A. And we have got a LAN and uh, different servers and that VPN server is a part of that LAN and it is serving those computers along with different servers. Now we are, are at location B at a remote location and we would like to access some of the services on our server or all the services on our server. So in order to do so we have to have the VPN client installed on our PC and we have already discussed that first part of this communication is the authentication and now we would be discussing in detail how does a secured communication is turned between point A between the VPN server and the point B at the client side. So we all know that all the computers on uh, and all the devices on the internet they have got a public IP address. So let us suppose that uh, we have got a public IP address of 1.2.3 dot 4 at the server side and 9.1.2.3 at the client side. But this VPN server is a part of our internal network and we know that at the inter in the internal network we assign our internal addresses. IP addresses, a pool of IP addresses are uh, served uh, for internal purposes. So let us suppose that our internal IP address at the server is 192.168.0.10 and now first the authentication between point A and point B is done. The server would authenticate if point B should be able to access the information at location A and if it can then our IP address, internal IP address is assigned to the VPN client. So let us suppose the internal IP address of 192.168.0.2 is assigned to the client B and then our tunnel is established between point A and point P. So it's a secure tunnel and that tunnel is also assigned a number that is equivalent to the client internal IP address that is 192.168.0.2. So now if this client B wants to send some packet or data to point A, then how it is done? First, point B makes a packet, data packet, 
with the real information in it and that pack, uh, data packet has the IP address of 192.168.0.2 that is it has got the internal IP address of the virtual private network and then that data packet is an encrypted and then that data packet is encapsulated in a bigger packet. Let us call that packet as an IPsec packet. And that packet would the destination IP address of the server and the sending IP address of our client. Now this bigger data packet that is wrapping the internal data packet would be have the IP addresses of client and server that is the public IP addresses so now this data packet would be sent from point A to point B and uh, along in within the tunnel that has been established uh, between point A and point B when this data packet reaches to point A, their server unwraps this bigger data packet and gets the inner actual data packet. And now it has got, uh, it uh, uh, knows that this I, uh, packet has been sent to the client, uh, which has the IP address of 192.168.0.2 and then it would send that data packet to its intended computer and this is how the communication is done on a VPN technology. So now let us suppose a hacker is able to hack one of the routers that comes along the path of our virtual tunnel and he would uh, first, uh, he has to get into the tunnel using the packet sniffers or different uh, type of uh, intrusion technology. And once he gets into the tunnel, then he can capture the bigger data packets and he would only see the bigger data packets with the host and uh, destination IP addresses, public IP addresses and he would not be able to see the internal packet. If he is a very good hacker and he hacks, uh, unwraps those, that packet, then he would see an encrypted data packet. And it would be very difficult for him to decrypt that data packet. And when the VPN technology senses that some of the data packets are being compromised or the communication is slowed down, then it, the, it can or it would use a different route and it would establish a different route between point A and B, point B. It would make a tunnel around that route and then the communication would be done between point A and point B. So uh, the, the, this is how the communication in VPN is made secured. So the tunnel would be uh, established, the new tunnel would be established so the hacker would not be able to hack into that router and uh, even if he does, then he has to deal with the tunnel, he has to deal with the external data packet encapsulated, the um, encapsulation, and then he has to deal with the encryption. That is why VPN is called the secured communi communication. So, now let us discuss about different applications of VPN. So VPN is being used by many people, many organizations, and there are different kinds of applications. Uh, in, in the past, we used to have 
frame relays from VPN communication, but now we are using IP infrastructure for VPN communication. And uh, VPN can be used by the universities or are being used by the universities. So if you are a researcher at a university and you would like to access the uh, services uh, from your home, then you can use the VPN technology or if you are a remote worker and uh, you are working from your home and your office is using Soho small office home office uh, concept then you can access the office in internal network using the VPN or if you are a remote or the field uh, worker and you are selling some things and you would like to update the information then you can use the VPN or uh, if uh, you are in a police department you are you chasing some criminal then you can use the mobile VPNs and you can use the VPNs in the healthcare sector because if you uh, reach at an accident and you see that uh, a person is dying then you can get his personal file on a secure channel. So there are different applications of VPNs. And now guys and girls we would be discussing some do's and don'ts of VPN. So let us discuss uh, the don'ts of VPNs. Uh, once the connection is established between the VPN server and VPN client then the server thinks that this client B is a part of the internal network and it tries to serve the client in the same manner as it is serving the internal PCs. As we know that in, on the local area networks we can get a very high speeds of uh, data communication. Let us suppose our internal network is communicating at 100 megabits per second. So if we have got a fiber optics connection for the internet services at our server end or at our client end, then we are okay because we have got a high communication speed. But let us suppose we have got a DSL at our server end and we have got an uplink of 1 megabits per second. This is the upload speed, not the download speed. So it, the server can upload the data at 1 megabits per second. And uh, the client can download the data at, let's suppose, uh, 512 kbps. Then the communication would be done at 512 megabits per second. But let us suppose we have got 10 clients and they have established the VPN connection at the same time. So this 1 megabits per second would be divided by 10 and the data upload speed would be divided into these 10 PCs and it, it could get slower. So for a reliable VPN connection we have to get a very good upload speed depending upon the number of the clients. Number two, we have got to get a good wiring and the new equipment at our offices. Because VPN is a new technology, the old routers, for example, those routers which are 10 or 12 years are old, old, they cannot do the VPN communication. So if you are facing some, if you have got an old routers at your office or at your client end and uh, you are not able to get uh, the VPN working then you should check your routers and if you have got the old wiring at uh, your office because your office is in an older building then you, the VPN could, cannot be a reliable service because if uh, on the older wiring the communication is not reliable and it is slower. So 
if uh, the communication is not reliable and it is slower then the server would think that someone is trying to break into the system or the system is being hacked and it would, would try to establish a new VPN connection with the client by and but it would again get the slower connection and it would again try to establish a new tunnel to the client and so on and so forth and in this scenario our VPN would not be able to work properly. So guys now let's just discuss about different versions of VPN and the different types of VPNs that are available in the market. So guys I would see you in the next tutorial and we would be discussing about the different versions of VPN and different types of VPN uh, in the market. If you would like to know more about VPNs or computer networking then please visit iFactNet.com. So guys see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye bye.